Hi, I'm Paula Contel and I'm going to tell you a few things you probably don't know about me. Although the fact that I was on Bay FM for, I don't know, 105 years, maybe you've heard all these stories before, but I'm trying very hard to think of things that you haven't heard of before. Well, I'm Pauline Calenso, if I'm going to be honest, from East Geelong, went to Geelong High School. Actually, my biggest, can you hear my dog barking? That's my dog, honey. (laughs) Sure, honey. She must know you're here. So uh, the first thing I remember that really got me motivated in life was at Geelong High School. I was leaning over the fence, as all good girls did at Geelong High School, talking to a boy that was walking through the park, (laughs) who I must have thought was a bit of a right. And anyway, the school principal came up and called me over and shooed the boy away. And then he said to me, in no uncertain terms did Clary love, who many would remember. And he said, you are going to be 16 and pregnant and my taxes are going to be paying for your unwanted child. And I thought, really? All I did was talk to the boy. Um, Anyway, that that served as great motivation for me for the rest of my days, actually. And I credit Clary Love for that insult because I thought to myself, I'll show you. When I met my husband, Stretch, I was introduced to him, but his name is actually Srečko. He's Slovenian. And I, of course, couldn't say Srečko. And everyone else was calling him Stretch. But when we started dating... It just kind of seemed weird to say stretch, hey stretch, and I couldn't say stretchko, I didn't feel confident to say that, so I actually didn't actually call him anything for two years, it was a bit of hey you, uh, mate, um, it was really awkward until one day I said, I told him, I just don't know how to say your name, and we rehearsed it, <laughs> now I'm excellent, stretchko, I can say it really well. I love poodles, I'm obsessed with poodles, if I go for a walk and someone's got a poodle, I've got to like literally run across the road and and fondle the poodle whether they're tiny miniature toys standard I just am obsessed with poodles and the other thing I'm obsessed with the musicals and my favorite musical of all time is Miss Saigon and if you go to see Miss Saigon just take a box of tissues because you're just going to sob love it and I've been in a few myself probably not performed as well as I'd have liked but anyway I was once on Pot of Gold where Bernard King you may or may not remember Bernard King the late great um, he was one of the judges as was Jerry Peroni and I actually won a heat and they flew me to Sydney I had to sing another song and I didn't get much rehearsal time for this song and I did my performance didn't win I was a bit ordinary really and I was so panicked after this experience that I remember I went home that night flew home went to bed and it was all night my heart was just racing 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 I felt like I was going to have a heart attack and I was only 20 three or four or something and I had to take myself to the Geelong Hospital emergency room <laughs> and it was actually like a panic attack that I'd actually been so stressed from singing on this show that I had something I think they call it sinus trachycardia or something and I've not really had an experience of that before but it was bizarre a complete panic station so I gave singing on television away as, as probably not for me I used to do singing telegrams <laughs> I used to get paid six dollars for a telegram and off I'd go and dressed in these stupid costumes and burst into song and um, the most famous person I ever did a singing telegram for was um, Daryl Summers. Welcome to Geelong, the greatest city of all, I sang to him in brashes <laughs> in my red velvet skirt and cape and blowing my kazoo as an entrance so yeah that was big money in those days, six dollars a telegram. I was on Perfect Match three times which I suppose is the equivalent of like The Bachelor these days and this was the 80s. Uh, Greg Evans was the host of this show and Dexter was the robot who found you your perfect match. And how I happened to be on it three times, it does make me sound desperate, but I thought it'd be a bit of fun. Girlfriend and I auditioned. And so the first time I was on the show, I was one of the three girls and the guy behind the screen got to pick from our answers which girl he wanted to date. And anyway, he didn't pick me, so that was okay. A few weeks later, I got a call from Channel 10 saying, would you like to be the single this time? You, you can pick the, the bloke. So I came back on. That was my second appearance. And I, I picked this bloke that, oh, you know, if I could, could I have picked any worse? It was. <laughs> we didn't get along, needless to say. But luckily for us, they do send you on a date with another couple. And so I got on really well with the girl that was on the other date. And my third appearance on the show was coming back on the couch to talk about how we didn't get along. So that's how it worked. But I tried to be kind, but you know how these things work with videos. Um, What they do is they just keep niggling at you. No, no, he must have done something you didn't like. Oh, he was all right. He was all right. No, he must have. What did he do that you that really bugged you a bit? Oh, I suppose it was the way he did his hair. What it, what was it about his hair you didn't like? And then, of course, they put it all together, and then you look like a, a right bitch because you've really, you've had a go at him. But they've really sort of got it out of you bit by bit. So that was a bit of fun going on Perfect Match. And one big confession I have to make during my 
my breastfeeding days, I got addicted to all those soapies in the middle of the day. And to this day, oh, the shame of it. I still watch the bold and the beautiful whenever I can. I still like Brook Ridge and all of that. So confessions. Okay, I wanted to hit you with a really big one just to wrap it up. Like you, I used to wet the bed. <laughs>